everyone and welcome back to my channel so this is going to be a favorites video so if you want to see some of the things that i've been loving recently then keep watching so first and foremost i hope you're all doing okay i'm not too bad today just cracking on getting work done really um i am however a little bit nervous because i'm filming on a new camera it's the sony ZV1 or something like that and I normally have the Canon Mark III, the Canon G7X Mark III, which died over the weekend and to be honest it's been playing up for quite some time um, but I was just trying to get it to go as long as it could and um, now it won't read memory cards and just won't turn on and function properly so it's great. Um, so I made the investment with this and I really really hope that the quality and the sound is okay. It's meant to be better so you'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you feel like it does look better and that sort of thing um but obviously you're not here to chat cameras with me you're here to talk about favorites and i've got a few bits um to share with you i love doing these videos i feel like i'm like recommending things to like chums and stuff like you know when you see someone you're like you've got to try this it's so good you've got to give it a go and that's what i feel like i'm doing it in these videos so i've got beauty bits i've got um householdy like cleaning items i have um snacky snacks and a beverage suggestion and i also have like things for relaxation so you know like telly and books and that kind of thing but we're going to start with beauty now a few of the beauty items are actually from previous brand collaborations this isn't an ad but obviously i'll make it really clear which of those items are from that if that makes sense just so you know but really it's just a testament to how great they are so i'm going to start strong this is definitely not a brand collaboration or a previous one. This. And you're probably thinking, Charlotte, is that not a BT item? It's a um, small cheese grater. No, 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 friends. No, this is a foot grater. Uh, it's the Rickens Stainless Steel Foot File, and I acquired it from Amazon. Now, I don't really like wearing shoes <laughs> or socks. I am mostly barefoot uh, I just find it more comfortable I like that I know that some of us are in that category and some of us are like no I need socks on or something on my feet all the time Mark is in that latter category whereas I'm the complete opposite and I feel like I have the kind of foot sole now that could walk across fire and not feel anything um which you know should I ever be in that situation is a plus however for sandal weather it's not so much um so i needed to basically grate my feet and i appreciate that this isn't like you know lovely chat but it's honest chat and i'm sure there are some dried footed humans amongst us watching this and you'll be nodding you will be nodding you need this in your life i mean the parmesan cheese reference is not actually too far removed from what the results are because and i would suggest you do it like over a like towel so you can put the remnants in the bin but when i first had a go it honest to god looked like i'd been grating cheese it i know i know tmi that's very gross but we are nothing here if not real and honest um it's fantastic it's probably one of the best that i've ever used and my feet feel so much more comfortable because obviously dry skin and cracked heels can be very sore and it's just sorted me out like literally first time i used it my feet already felt so much better and then i've just like as they've like kind of because you don't want to go too hard because obviously you're filing skin off your foot um but after a couple of weeks like doing it a bit now and again they feel so good and i can't recommend that enough so um yay for crusty feet anyway that's that one and then the next two i'm going to show you side by side it's fake tan season for me i love the sunshine i tan quite well however obviously the older you get the more aware of the fact that that actually damages your skin and you want to slather that spf on and also i don't know about you but like with kids i don't have loads of time to just sit out in the sun i can't remember honestly when i last did that obviously i catch like a tan walking around and doing stuff in the garden playing with the kids and stuff um but i'm not i'm not like in bikinis every weekend in my garden sipping on a daiquiri anymore i mean never really was to be fair but um i rely on fake tan fake tan i'm a pretty like 
hardcore fake tanner in all honesty i do it less over the winter months obviously because sometimes it's just nice to be a bit like wintry but generally speaking i love using it now this one is from a previous brand collaboration and this was on instagram so i did some stories and a post with them after trying it out um and i actually went on to buy like a second tube which is actually nearly gone um and it's the new nivea gradual tan moisturizer with firming and radiance and key temp for tighter firmer skin fair to medium and this is great if you're not comfortable or confident with normal fake tan but you want to add a glow because it really does work and it does feel gorgeous on your skin i put it on this morning on my arms my chest and my calves typically because those are the areas that i have out the most and it like keeps my skin really really soft and smooth it's like it just feels nice do you know what i mean and over time it really does build up to a nice glow and then when i want to go hard like really go for it and obviously this requires a lot more prep like exfoliating your body and wearing a tanning mitt and not touching anything for half an hour that kind of thing um but this is brilliant it is so good and it's the bondi sands or bondi sands um aero self tanning foam it's one hour express and it's got a coconut scent and it really doesn't like you always get a hint of something biscuity by the end maybe when you wear a fake tan i don't think any of them are completely completely foolproof um these i find smell better generally than these do um but this is just brilliant what i tend to do is that i will when i do put it on maybe like once a week once every two weeks i will like work out in the morning and I'll get ready and I'll put it all on, leave it to dry for a bit and then put on clothes that I'm not really bothered about, like say a leggings and a t-shirt, get on with my day, you know, be a mom or pick the kids up from school, work, work, work or, or whatever it is. And then in the evening before bed, I will rinse it off. And that's so nice because it's that effective that I don't have to do an overnight jobby where then you've got really like gross fake tan sheets. It, it just, does it so quickly and it's such a nice colour i have it on today i feel like the camera because i've got my ring light on it's slightly washing me out but i've done this maybe about three days ago and then on certain areas where maybe i get a little bit dry because i do get dry um i like to top up those areas with this so it kind of works quite well because you don't get that like you know when it gets a bit patchy and your skin dries out and you've got to scrub off your old fake tan i feel like it minimizes that and they're just um, I've really been enjoying using them so depending on what level of fake tan you're into give them a go um then the next two things beauty related are these two now this is from a previous brand collaboration from iconic london this is their prep set glow in the glow shade um I did a group of instagram stories for them so I can't show you those anymore because obviously they expire but this you can tell that i really like it because i've used a fair bit of it and it's a spray so you have to really go at this to use it up um it has a little like ball bearing in it and you shake it to infuse the shimmer within the formula in here and you basically spray it as the name suggests you can either prep with it which i do you can set your makeup with it as well and it also gives you a glow and i just think it's beautiful and you know sometimes when you finish your makeup but you can kind of feel like it's a little bit like that kind of powdery finish or it's not quite settled yet this does that job of like settling it really nicely into your skin really quickly and you do get a glow i really really like this i really like it so nice work there iconic and then this lip gloss it's one of these where like i know it's from l'oreal paris but couldn't tell you anything else about it apart from the fact that it's in the shade amplify uh, 406 it's a l'oreal like lip plumping one so it's got that kind of minty feeling to it but i just love this over like my soft matte lip creams i wear those a lot um i go on about them all the time and typically in the winter months i probably wear them matte but in the summer i'm not about matte i want glow and like a bit of sparkle and a bit of something like you know like 
radiant that kind of thing and i just put this on top all the time and i love it i think it's really really nice so i can definitely recommend that and obviously it's really affordable as well which is never a bad thing and so that is those so next up i'm going to talk uh cleaning i've got two laundry items and then i also have a smelly thing um in a nice way obviously <laughs> that'd be weird um but these i'm obsessed and i cannot tell you how many i've bought of these now you will know long term i'm a surf gal normally because i like the scents but ever since i tried this and it told me to pair it with this i have not stopped so this is the bold turn one brilliant clean with built-in lenore freshness in spring awakening it's a gel so you take its head off and you squirt it in and you put it in your washing drum and then this is the lenore outdoorable as if dried outside spring awakening together they are a scent station <laughs> see what it did there but it's even gotten to the point where daisy's best friend's mum asked me what i used on daisy's clothes when she went for a play date because she said they smell amazing and then my grandma when i visited her could not get enough and she was like what is it i can smell it from here it's so nice so i bought her them so she can recreate it at home um and i just love them i think they smell so nice like i had to wash this dress i got this new um the other day but then promptly spilt pasta sauce all down it because that's the kind of person that i am apparently and um so i had to wash it straight away because i didn't want it to stain and i put it on this morning and it just smelled amazing and you know you put it on and you're like oh that's nice it's so good it's so good so definitely try them if you haven't i find that they tend to be on offer a lot at the moment like we have a waitrose relatively near to us and i get them from there a lot and they're like reduced if you know what i mean so that is those and then the other thing that i really liked and i wanted to share it because i bought it twice and i think that is a sign of it being something that i like <laughs> um it's the new carpet fresh the 1001 one they've redesigned the packaging which is a lot like you more user friendly because it used to have a lid whereas this has a really nice spray function and it's a bit like a polish one do you know what i mean like pledge kind of vibes um and you just go like Ch -ch 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 instead but the new scent is exotic flowers and pink grapefruit and it's really lovely like obviously we have a dog and he's not a hypoallergenic dog he's a sheddy smelly sometimes smells a bit like feet and cheese dog and we love him dearly but sometimes it's quite nice after a hoover to just like refresh things like upholstery carpets rugs um just to freshen up so i typically do a big clean on a friday and this is when this gets used my only advice would be if you're spraying it make sure you dogs and kids aren't around generally speaking because you don't want them inhaling all of this but it's fab it's really really nice and you can definitely smell it when you walk into a room and i love the smell of grapefruit so i can definitely recommend that i picked it up both at home bargains and i also saw it at sainsbury's so it's definitely around and available and in stores and stuff so definitely look out for that because it's yummy as a scent don't eat it um right now we're going to talk about snacks and i'm wary of recommending these because i don't know how many people are going to like them but they're really good the first time i had these was in the lake district and i want to say it's possibly the last time that mark and i went so possibly 2020 i think we went at the end of february or the very beginning of march and then we were very lucky because then the week later everything started getting really serious and quite scary so yeah um but what mark and i would do we like we get there on the first day and we like chill out for a bit like sometimes we have a nap because we can and then we like go for a walk and get some lunch and we'll like walk around a bit more because the lake district is stunning and then on the way back there's like a sainsbury's there and we would always go and pick up like drinks to have in our room and we pick up snacks and then we go back to our room and like chill for a bit more and then we go out for a meal that's always like what we do on the first day and then like second thing we can do loads of walking um but the first time i found these was in that zane's reason i remember taking them back and having them and thinking oh my god these are epic and they are the serious pig crunchy snacking cheese um and it's basically like dried out cheese snacks i'm not selling it they're like they go a bit bubbly but they're so good they are like like what is in them what cheese is it italian hard cheese so i'm assuming it's probably parmesan -y. 
something like that. Oh no, it's Quattro Cento, I think, cheese. And they crumble it and bake it in a super special oven and it comes out as a crispy cheese snack. But they do a plain one. They do one with rosemary and then they do one with truffle. When I open these, Daisy and Mark gag because it is very truffle scented. I love them. I love them in the way that I love giant corn. And we all know by now that I love a giant corn, especially the M&S one. So if you feel like trying them, I know Sainsbury stopped them, but I actually bought, bought a pack of them from Amazon and I got like four flavours of each, if you know what I mean, like four of each flavour. And um, I love them. You know on a Friday night when you finally crack open a bottle of wine and you pour it and it just that noise when it goes into the last and you're like oh yeah friday feeling and then i would get myself one of these and just have a little nibble and a glass of wine and it's just the best feeling the best feeling um but yeah they're so nice so if you like cheese definitely give them a go but if you don't like cheese that much don't because you'll probably think they taste like sick or something because none of my family members will eat them and that's great because there's more for me but tread with caution i feel like you're gonna know if you're gonna love these so if you know these are good so that's them and then on the opposite end of the spectrum i really liked these i picked them up from home bargains and they are the bliss indulgent moment in hazelnut they're 35 calories now they're not massive are they but you know when you really fancy like a little chucky something or other at night? Like this with like a bowl of fruit and like, I like those 10 calorie jellies that you can get. It just kind of hits the spot. And they taste, I thought they'd be like a Ferrero Rocher, but for me, they're a bit more like a Kinder Bueno. You know, like, but a tiny bit because they're only little. But that's what's quite nice about them because you can add like one to a little bowl with some fruit and then it, it's kind of hit the spot but you've not eaten like the whole pack they come in a big pack um but i can definitely recommend trying them so it was home markings but i don't know maybe if like b m would stop them as well but definitely try home markings because they're lovely and then now um if you well just drink sensibly kids so the next one is this and i bought this twice now from aldi it's the infusionist small batch and this is the lychee and apricot and it's a gin liqueur and it's so nice if you like um you know like shambord i love that at christmas it is my i have to have that in at christmas and if you've watched me for any length of time now over the years you'll know that is my christmas drink with prosecco but you put a little bit in the bottom of your prosecco glass and top it up with prosecco and it's a bit like you know like a prosecco cocktail type thing you get a few different types like with peach and things like that um it's really really nice and like nice and summery and a bit different so i can really recommend um this little guy and he's not too expensive either so go aldi aldi has some fantastic flavored gins at the moment as well um they're doing a great job great job so next up we're going to talk about kelly now you would probably expect me to include Love Island in this, but like, I don't know if it's me, but it feels like a bit of a slow start this year. Like I've not been able to focus on it that much. And I don't know if it's maybe just jealousy because they're all in like Mallorca somewhere where it's hot and like can lick each other if they want to. Um, and, and, we're, and we're not, I don't know. But it might also just be like, I don't know. I probably need to give it a, give, a proper go. Like you can't, judge something on a couple of episodes and we're one behind anyway because we tend to watch the one from the night before on the night that we're on because then we can fast forward through the adverts that's a top tip for you but i'll uh i'll keep you posted because i haven't got a vibe about anyone yet if you know what i mean but there were three things that we really really enjoyed watching as a couple that i thought i would share with you so the first one is breeders now mark found this and i think it's on bbc or something like that i think he like found it on iplayer possibly i don't know and um, i will leave everything linked down below so you can find it appropriately because sometimes the memory lets me down um but it's so so funny it's 
it basically follows two parents and it's a bit of a comedy sketch really and just about like how hard it is being a parent and like all of these things that you come up against but it's just hilarious it's a proper good watch and i think what's nice about it is because there's a, a dad and a mum um like it shows both dynamics because a lot of the time i feel like it's very mum focused i don't know about you but a lot of these programs are um whereas this one it's like we watch it together and we both get it because obviously we are a mum and dad um but it's so funny so funny it has some swears in quite a few swears so if you're not that way inclined it might not be for you but we love it so that that's the first one um the second one is an annoying thing to recommend because obviously unless you have sky atlantic it, i don't know how you would watch it but mayor of east town kate winslet was amazing in that and the whole general premise the plot was great it was like a crime thrillery type thing you know there, there's been a murder who done it kind of vibe um but it was just a really really good watch it wasn't too long it wasn't too short it was just do you know what i mean and i love i love stuff like that i love working things out um mark gets really annoyed with me because i always i'm always able to work it out way before it gets revealed and he's like yeah just ruin it for the rest of us why don't you so we have a rule now that like i'm not allowed to tell him what my <laughs> what my like you know prediction is because i nine times out of ten i do ruin it and for, for me as well really because once i think i've worked it out i'm a bit like just waiting but it was really really good and then um the last one is time and it's got stephen graham and sean bean in wow that was really good it was only three episodes i went into it thinking it was like really long and like really like kind of happy that i had something juicy to watch but i think it was only three episodes in the end and it's a hard watch it made me very anxious watching it because especially at the start it goes in quite strong and you're not really sure what to expect but basically it follows a man on his journey through being admitted to um prison and convicted of a crime and like his like journey and like does he reform does he not like w what's it like is he gonna survive it's it doesn't it evokes some sympathy with the inmates and i say that lightly obviously because i don't promote things like murder or hurting people or, or doing people wrong or, or anything like that but i think that sometimes it kind of it just kind of opens it up a bit more that everything isn't always black and white like yes what people do is still wrong but sometimes it can come from things like addiction and it can come from like the upbringing that somebody has had um and that is something that you don't often really consider or think about and it's not i think it's just sad it's just sad um to watch but it's also very inspiring as well and just a real eye-opener obviously i don't work in a prison so i couldn't tell you how accurate this is but if you do or you're a police officer or you are a newly reformed um individual who's left prison then let me know in the comments down below because um yeah i just thought it was brilliant a really really good watch um so again i'll leave the details down below but i think that was a bbc one and then the other one actually that i just remembered um is let me try and find it one sec so it's called together and it has sharon hogan who i love I love her and it has James McAvoy who I've decided I actually find quite sexy because I like his accent um but it's basically I think it's I think it's about 90 minutes long so I guess you could class it as a film type thing um and the BBC aired it and it was basically following a couple throughout lockdown um so obviously if you feel like that would make you uncomfortable watching it then then i'll leave that down to you but it's very sad i sobbed at one point i was very very upset watching it but it was also it was just nice to see something that kind of felt real and there were parts of it that felt quite political as well like talking about like lockdowns and vaccines and uh, things opening up and how they're not fair and how we could have saved more people had we done things sooner and but it's a very very like hard watch it's a beautiful watch it made me think of um 
A-level drama a lot because it's a bit like a dual monologue. So these two characters would be talking to each other but also talking to you through the camera. So it's almost like they were vlogging in a way but much more beautifully shot than anything I could ever produce. Um, but it was like it bro broke down that fourth wall and so you got sucked in very quickly. Initially, like it was a bit, you were watching it maybe for the first five or 10 minutes and you were like, okay, I'm confused because they're talking to me and they're talking to each other. What's the vibe here? If you just give it a chance, it is such a beautiful thing to watch. And I think it very, it, it did justice to what everybody's been through. Um, and the toll on relationships, the toll on work, um, family members, um, loss, the NHS, the government's decisions. Uh, parenting and trying to get out of everything like when things open up and how that's not typically just perfect and easy either and um, so that was a great watch and that that's like I'll leave that there now with telly because I've watched more telly than I normally do because I'm not really a telly person you won't believe me after I've just told you four programs to watch but honestly like I can't sit still. <laughs> um, books. I have a few on the go. Um, I'll share those over on my Instagram today, maybe just as a list of extra suggestions and people what are the ones to watch, uh, read. Um, but one that I really loved, I shared this a while ago, but I haven't done a favourites video since, was this. Now, I have really struggled to read. Um, my anxiety has been terrible um probably for the last year really and normally something that i quite heavily rely on for like escapism and stuff i couldn't get the concentration going to tap into it i just wasn't able to switch off and i haven't really read as much as what i normally would do and it's weird because i can't remember a time in my life where i've like turned away from books as much as i have but this kind of got me going again and it's called life and other happy endings i asked my parents for books for christmas and this was one of the ones that they chose it's by melanie Cantor. And I will read you the blurb if you would like. So, when Jennifer Cole is told she has three months to live, she decides to write three letters sharing the desires, fears and frustrations she has always kept to herself. And at first she finds that telling the truth makes her feel free and liberated. But three months later, Jennifer's secrets are alive and out in the world and so is she. As she discovers sometimes, truth has a really big way of surprising you. So, it's great. I'm not going to go into it any more than that because I've ruined it for you, but I just found it a really, really, really brilliant read and it didn't end the way that I was going to expect it to end and I just really enjoyed it. So if you're looking for one to read, this is great. My washing machine started now just in time for me to wrap this up, but this podcast on BBC Sounds was one that I really enjoyed when I've done like dog walks and stuff because they go on quite long dog walks, so you're usually about 45 minutes or so. And um, this is Who Killed Emma? A missing woman, a brutal kid killing and a world of sex, rape, lies and murder. After four years of investigation, journalist Sam Poling confronts the man she believes killed Emma. And it's a really, really grueling listen. It's obviously very sad um, because Emma lost her life. Um, and she's kind of trying to bring awareness to what happened to her and also bring awareness to what happens to sex workers and how they are not properly treated by various members of society um not least the people that abuse them and um hurt them and kill them but also you know they aren't respected by the police sometimes they aren't believed um and it's very very complex but as a result of the work that this lady has done the case has been reopened which is a fantastic thing so definitely go and listen to that if you enjoy that kind of genre and like learning more and finding out about it um i find it quite fascinating i don't know why because it's not it's something that i feel like i could do um obviously but um yeah it's a brilliant listen and then finally the last thing that i want to share is couch to 5k whoa charlotte is running i know what you're thinking um so typically for most of my life i've always been told like because of what I was born with, like impact sports aren't for you, try something else. However, like when I was a kid, I ran and I did cross country as a teenager and that kind of thing, we all did, run around and stuff. And as I got to being an adult, it became something like, am I not supposed to do this? And like, be wary of like my joints and stuff. I have arthritis, but the issue is, is if I don't move and exercise my body and I don't watch what I eat, 
the risk for me is then I will gain more weight, which would then be more detrimental to my joints than anything else I could ever do. And I was, I took Daisy T Rainbows, which she started last week. And there's a lovely walk there, uh, but I'd forgotten my headphones and I only have my phone on me. And I was kind of trying to listen to music, but not ruin other people's experience um, while they were walking their dogs, cycling, chilling out, whatever. And um, I thought, I've got that Couch to 5K app on my phone and I've really increased my fitness in the last six months. Uh, maybe now is just the time to try it. I was wearing Vans, a pair of leggings, a t-shirt and a denim jacket. I had no like sports gear on whatsoever. I really could have done with a sports bra in all honesty. And I just thought I'm going to give it a go because the patch that I was on was really quiet and why not? Like I was killing time because I didn't want to go too far in case Daisy got nervous because it was the first day. And I thought I'm going to try and do it. And I did it and I did it. And it was like, it wasn't hard. Like I didn't expect it to be like that. And I was really proud of myself because obviously it shows that my fitness is in a much much better plate and since then i'm now on week two and i'm run five so that was a week ago today and i'm gonna do run five tonight while she's at rainbows again and i'm gonna make it my little thing which i'm really excited about and i'm really hoping to see if i can complete it maybe i'll give up maybe i won't maybe i'll find it too hard but i'm really determined at the moment and week two is already a little bit more difficult than week one and then um I'll do run five tonight. I'll probably do run six on Saturday. And then I will start a week three, which will probably be even harder. But I'm so proud of myself. I have had a real thing in my head as well. Like I tried running once before years and years ago, before I had Bill. And um, I was getting larger by that point. I wasn't really aware of anything called nutrition and I just ate whatever I wanted. And um, I went on a run one day to try and I got a bee shouting at me out the window and I remember just stopping like these men rode off in their car laughing I stopped and I felt bright I could feel my face it just set on fire and they drove off and I turned around and I tried really really hard not to cry the whole way home like I walked towards what and then I burst into tears when I got home and it just completely put me off exercising in front of people but I've really really tried to like push myself and I'm so so proud and I really hope that I can do it so fingers crossed but I thought I would just share that at the end because sometimes it's nice to know that someone like you is doing it do you know what I mean because I'm not I'm not like super slim and I'm not the fittest and the most toned and that kind of thing in the world but I I do try I've got great like determination and um, I'm doing it so maybe you will feel like you can do it too because i i really feel like you can um but yeah that is everything it's probably a really long video because i haven't done one of these in ages and i've cheated your ear off i'm so sorry about that but um yeah i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope you're all doing well and i will hopefully see you all very very soon